SpaceX accomplished a lot last week successfully launching 60 production-level satellites for Starlink Constellation on Monday, November 11th, and completing a successful Crew Dragon static fire test ahead of its in-flight abort test scheduled to take place in early to mid-December. This week, the company continues to rack up successive wins, completing the first in a series of tank tests on Starship Mark 1. Starship Update Tank testing was initially expected to take place last week, the week of November 10th to 16th. However, as I mentioned in a previous video, due to a cold front moving through the area, testing had to be pushed back. This week though, the weather conditions in Boca Chica have seemed to take a turn for the better, and SpaceX has thus been able to commence tank tests on Starship Mark 1. Initially, the road closures in Boca Chica were scheduled to commence at around 12 p.m. Boca Chica time on Monday, but were pushed back to around 1.30 p.m. The details of the test are still unclear, and SpaceX has not released an official statement as to what actually occurred, but it appears that SpaceX conducted a pressure test using a neutral gas like nitrogen or helium. Through the cycles of pressurization with the tanks, SpaceX could possibly determine if any leaks are present in Mark 1's structure. As the tanks were pressurized, some of the dents in Mark 1's exterior structure began smoothening out. From observations from the live stream, it was noted that the top section of Mark 1 appeared to smoothen out prior to the bottom section, possibly indicating that the top tank was pressurized first while the bottom tank was pressurized after. At around 6 p.m. Boca Chica time on Monday, Mark 1 was seen taking its first breaths or venting. Shortly after venting, the workers returned to the lawn site and a couple hours later began spraying Mark 1's surface with some liquid. It's not exactly clear why this was done, but it's possible that it could have been an additional test to check for leaks. Here's a guess. It could have been bubble testing. Soapy water leak tests are sometimes done to detect the presence of a gas leak. If a leak is present, bubbles form. In the direct pressure technique of a bubble leak test, after a component is pressurized, it is then sprayed with a solution. Bubbles form if a leak is present. Again, it's not quite clear if this is what SpaceX did. This is just a guess. Upcoming closures and future tests. Road closures in Boca Chica so far were cancelled yesterday, November 19th, and have been cancelled for the 20th. So far, closures are scheduled to take place on Thursday and Friday of this week, November 21st and 22nd, as well as for next week, November 25th, 26th, and 27th. Over in Coco, quite a bit has happened in the past few days. For one, the fired bulkhead is now on. Over the weekend, on Sunday, the bulkhead was spotted with lifting straps attached and the crane in position. At around 12 p.m. on Monday 18, the dome was placed on top of the cylindrical structure of Mark II. It now appears that the team in Coco are making a few adjustments trying to align the dome correctly. To the moon in 2022. On Monday, November 18th, NASA announced the addition of five new partners eligible to bid on proposals to provide deliveries to the surface of the moon through NASA's Commercial Lunar Payload Services program. The addition of the five increases the list of CLIPS participants to 14. At a NASA teleconference held on November 18th, President and COO of SpaceX, Gwen Shotwell, stated that SpaceX is aiming to be able to drop Starship on the lunar surface in 2022. According to an article on Space.com with Site Shotwell statements, it mentions that SpaceX is excited about the CLIPS partnership. Starship was always designed to carry people, but early uncrewed efforts such as communication satellite launches, CLIPS flights, and cargo missions to the Martian surface will prove out the vehicle. Of course, SpaceX still has to bid and win contracts beating out the rest of its competitors to actually deliver payload to the surface of the moon through clips, but with the capability to deliver over 100 metric tons to the lunar surface, the company has a significant competitive advantage in delivering heavier payloads. Again, according to Shotwell, that capability far exceeds the mass that clips was looking for, but we think that brings pretty extraordinary capability to NASA, both for the clips program and others. While a 2022 Starship mission is not yet confirmed, we could still expect the Dare Moon mission scheduled to take place in 2023. Things so far look to be going well. MZ recently shared these photos via Twitter. It's captioned, Dinner with Elon Musk at LA. Starship developments are doing good so far. It's time to invite passengers. From the photos, it appears that SpaceX recently gifted MZ a thruster pod from Starhopper as a thank you for his support. More SpaceX developments. 
SpaceX to launch Nanoracks Outpost Demonstration Mission In other SpaceX developments, Nanoracks has booked the deployment of eight small satellites as well as the company's first in-space outpost demonstration mission aboard a single Falcon 9 launch. Through its technology demonstration specifically, the company will demonstrate the robotic cutting of a second-stage representative tank material on orbit. A statement on Nanorak's website continues to state that the test will be the first of its kind to demonstrate the future ability to convert spent upper stages in orbit into commercial habitats, a long-term goal of Nanorak's. In a response to Nanorak's booking, Gwen Shotwell stated that structural metal cutting has never been done in space, and SpaceX is honored to deliver a demonstration of this capability to orbit. Shotwell further went on to state that it's promising to see more companies like Nanorax investing in new technologies to advance the exploration of the Moon and ultimately Mars. The mission is expected to be launched in Q4 2020. It's quite impressive what Nanorax is attempting to do, convert spent upper stages into commercial habitats or space stations. Again, it's just another factor that puts into perspective the near era of space exploration we're actually in. As usual, the pace at SpaceX is frenetic. In the coming weeks, we should see more tank tests on Starship Mark 1, the eventual move of the upper section of Mark 1 to the launch site, and mating of the lower section and upper section ahead of the 20 km tests. In the coming weeks, we should also expect an official announcement for the date of the Crew Dragon in-flight abort test. For now though, we'll just have to wait again to see what SpaceX does next.